my dad, that guy. My guy. All right. My dad hates San Diego. He migrated here from Santa Barbara, and I grew up listening to his rants that this city is weak-minded. We could have been something. We could have been L.A., but we chose geraniums over smokestacks. He can't move away, not yet, because of work and family. He copes with his self-inflicted imprisonment through alcohol. Wookie Jack, Black Rye, IPAs, and fireball shots. <laughs> like my father, I've always felt lost in this town. I use my GPS every time I drive, <laughs> even though I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> I wanted to like it here. I wanted to give this place a fair chance. I wanted to find a home like the rest of the Sunshiners. So I got religious. <laughs> I hung out in Santee. I went to Pathways and even Sunrise sometimes. We ministered to the homeless in El Cajon every Tuesday, passing out socks and prayers. My dad anguished over my behavior. <laughs> Being Christian, for me, was as much about trying to find happiness as it was about self-laceration, making me a sort of masochist. I was trying to cut out my lesbian identity. I also got to sing morbid things. I'm talking about crosses, thorny crowns, and blood. So much blood. People seriously chanting, Jesus blood, Jesus blood, <laughs> Jesus blood. <laughs> I had all but successfully repressed my same-sex urges. The church is a great place to forget your sexuality, and let's be real, so is San Diego. <laughs> I hadn't had an orgasm since I found Jesus. And my sort of boyfriend never tried to touch my boobies. No one knew we were dating, entirely missing the point of even having a beard, but he was the hottest guy in youth group, so I was winning at this whole straight thing. As glad as I would have been to show him off, we had to keep it a secret. In the church, being in a relationship guarantees that you will be guilt-tripped into marriage, especially if people think you're even thinking about having sex. His ex-girlfriend, Blair, started to catch on. If I thought I wanted this guy to like me, then you'd have to say Blair expected him to worship her. Even though the rest of the youth group was completely oblivious to the hundreds of text messages he and I exchanged daily, Blair could tell something was going on. She suspected Hanky Panky, and she fucking hated it. <laughs> I really should have kept her out of my life. She once told me with no shame, she used to kill hummingbirds. She fed them to her dog. I'm pretty sure our friendship started out as a maneuver. She'd use me to get to him. I played along to maintain proximity, keep your enemies closer, right? Sunday mornings, I went with her to the swap meet. Sunday nights, I watched Fred Astaire movies with her ex-boyfriend. I lied to her face. I told him I just wanted to keep tabs on her. She pushed harder for my submission. Our friendship got elevated to bestie status, and she made us a shared diary. My feelings, be my feelings toward her became less strategic and more confusing. She was studying to go to nursing school. She wanted to reconcile Christianity with feminism, and she was insecure about the cleft in her chin below her perfect Italian lips. The two, my sort of boyfriend and my fake bestie, confided in me on the same night. Sammy, my faux boo texted, I believe I'm falling for you. Blair wrote to me seconds later, don't tell anyone, but I think I have feelings for my ex. I met both of them at Denny's, sat between them, and laugh cried into my chocolate shake. <laughs> I had fallen for her, my very first love triangle. As my lust for her grew, so did her anger that I was feeding her lies about her ex and she couldn't get any proof. 
It was like she wanted to smell him on me. During her interrogations about suspicious eye contact, she leaned in so close I got dizzy. I barely knew what was going on myself, except that when she was less than five feet from me, my face got hotter than the Holy Spirit. <laughs> One night I got a nosebleed. We had been giving away socks and met afterwards in the apartment shared by three boys from the youth group, including Mr. Secret Boyfriend. I'd been pretty much ignoring him, spending most of my energy trying to avoid Blair. She made this difficult by intentionally standing next to me, knowing she could make me squirm. She could tell I was on the edge of insanity and was furious I wouldn't tell her why. Her forced attention made my face red. I locked myself in the bathroom and sat on the floor, suffocating blood and deranged laughter with tissues. This was the devil, this was Lucifer telling me he's gonna come pouring out of me and ruin my make-believe love life and my shirts. <laughs> she pounded on the door. Sammy, what's wrong with you? If I hadn't locked her out, she'd probably be in there playing nurse for me, telling me how to pinch my nose and pushing back my hair and all kinds of sapphic fantasy material. <laughs> By the end of the evening, we boiled with physical tension, her because she wanted to punch me, me because I wanted to do something else to her with my fist. <laughs> She left frustrated. I left frustrated. <laughs> she texted me asking if I wanted to fight her. You know what? Fuck it. I'd tell her she'd be disgusted with me and leave me alone, and I'd get back to pretending I'm going to be so in love with her ex-boyfriend. I texted roughly, Blair, I'm not expecting you to respond to this, but the truth is I actually have a crush on you. I don't know if I prayed harder for her to want me or hate me. I got neither. I got this mind fuck. Sammy, I still care about you, and this doesn't change how I think about you. The truth is, I struggled with similar feelings when I was younger, and my mom literally beat it out of me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, literally. <laughs> Once she knew my secret, I didn't last much longer in the ch closet or the church. My parents didn't beat the gay out of me. The first time I came out to my dad was to say I was going to church on Sunday. The second time I came out, he just asked, who's the girl? <laughs> I wanted it to be Blair. We'd been on a friendship honeymoon. She used my feelings for her to get me to do things, and I loved doing them. She'd asked me to drive all the way out to Sonic to meet her for tots. We had sleepovers. I knew if I tried to spoon her, she'd punch me. I enjoyed being her little bitch. <laughs> then she went off to college. I kind of feel like she'd always been rooting for my fall from grace. I'd tell her about my first forays into the land of sin. She'd gasp and grin and ask for a play-by-play. -play. <laughs> and always so, so surprised my parents didn't seem to mind. She tells me her college party stories. <laughs> She's on a dry campus. This means she tells me about the boys she hides under her bed next to the vodka. <laughs> I wonder sometimes if I'm her main outlet for debauchery. Recently, she insisted, dude, we should get drunk together. <laughs> as soon as she came home for spring break, I took her to 80s night at the brass rail. <sighs> On Manic Mondays, drinks are $2. Our 11 plastic cup cocktails resulted in a makeout session that spanned the dance floor to the smoking patio and back. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, still, we never got past kissing. Later that night, she fell asleep, feet on the floor, still wearing her damn sneakers. <laughs> on Saturday, I brought the new, more exciting, more bisexual Blair to a warehouse party. I had this fantasy that even though she'd never run off and elope with me, we could have secret trysts for her to hide from her youth group. I took her to Barrio Logan, led her inside a cube of rebar and concrete filled with half-naked hippies. The host had set up about 15 mattresses on the floor. The community to-do list had been sharpened on the wall. Blair took a balloon from the Whippets Fairy, a six-foot-three man in a tutu with fairy wings. 
let's do this, she said. After she came out of the faint, Blair told me, when I'm nurse, I'm going to do these on my days off all day. <laughs> Quit giving me puppy eyes. I am not kissing you tonight. I felt like she rolled up a newspaper and swatted me on the snout. I almost took it in stride. After all, she did say tonight. But she found someone to kiss. And when I protectively slapped his hand off her drunk ass, the fucker gave me a smile like he knew he was going to win. When the Whippets fairy dropped condoms on their heads, I realized she'd never play along with my dream. She was willing enough to drink, to try drugs, to let a guy she'd just met wrap her in sheets on a warehouse floor but she wasn't willing to want me. I thought I'd left the church behind. I thought I'd left behind the confusion, the denial, the delusions. Yet here I stood, surrounded by drunkards, suckling balloons of empty pleasure, my desires eluding me, the object of my desire moaning at my feet for someone else. I'd wasted years chasing fantasy after fantasy, and as each one died, I found myself just as lost as I'd been since the day I realized I don't feel right in this city. I tripped over bodies till I found the exit. I sat on the alley floor. The sky was white. After a time, my eyes settled on dew on a trash can. Not dew, maggots. Maggots on the trash, maggots on the ground, maggots sparkling like Rice Krispies. I thought of something my dad said to me. The difference between San Diego and Santa Barbara is the angle of the sun. People get washed out here and it makes them floppy and defenseless. They can't help themselves. <laughs> Sammy Peterson. <laughs>